okay, uh, so basically, as told, I'm going to talk about Graal and the whole point of this first part of presentation session uh, is basically to onboard everyone onto what the Graal is, why the hype, and that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah. Uh, and we want to start by talking about something very, very basic, which is basically something we as developers do every day, which is deploy code and write code. So the regular flow is, you know, you write code, whatever JVM language you use, then you compile it into a bytecode, and eventually it gets into a JVM, which executes it. And to execute it, it needs to kind of compile it into native code, right? And just for the sake of this presentation, I'm going to simplify it even more and basically say that everything is an array of bytes. So basically, you write one kind of array of bytes, then you turn it into another type. And then finally, JVM turns it into native code, which is also uh, an array of bytes, essentially. So the JVM part is the two latter ones. And actually, you can even uh, split JVM into more pieces, which means that you have the virtual machi machine itself. And you also have the compiler, which usually is C2. And actually, both of these are written in C. And it's a huge, actually, it's very important why, that it's written in C. Because Oracle released a while ago, actually, you can see that it happened in 2014. They released this uh, proposal for Java level JVM compiler interface. And just to sum it up, uh, it basically means that uh, it's an interface which enables compiler to be written in Java. And it's a very important thing here. Uh, the motivation itself, just you know, short version is writing a JVM compiler in Java should allow production of a high quality compiler that will be easier to maintain and improve than existing compilers developed in C. So basically, they had a bunch of legacy C code they nobody really wanted to work on. So they decided, let's do it in Java. And that's the essence, basically, be, 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 uh, behind the girl, right? So the Java level JVM compiler interface is the vertical line, basically, with the separator between the virtual machine and the compiler. So Crawl at its core is just a rewrite of the existing uh, Java compiler, which is, sits inside the JVM, which basically compiles bytecode into native code. But you know, when I first heard about it or realized it that it's you know it's just a compiler rewrite, like I really didn't care. Uh, I think many people don't get to you know. Exp experience or interact with the compiler directly, we just run it on JVM, so, ah. So the only thing that we might want to know about uh, Graal as a compiler is performance. And that is partially the reason why uh, it got so hyped. Uh, because a while ago, I think uh, the main thing was that Twitter said, OK, we tried Graal. It actually performs better. They said that. It's like 11% out of the box. They tweaked it a bit. It became like 13. And actually now, uh, Oracle says that Twitter saves the like 25% uh, CPU just by using Graal. So I'm not sure what the number is uh, correct. Because for example, when we did the uh, benchmarks here at Twix, the results weren't that clear. Uh, sometimes it's faster. Sometimes it's slower. It depends. And actually, there are a couple, at least, uh, blog posts about uh, people trying Graal and finding that it's actually slower. So, you know, it's, I guess it depends on the use case, uh, because there are definitely some use cases where it's just faster. For example, if you use a lot of streams, Graal is amazing there. It optimizes it like really well. And of course, Twitter also talked about uh, fewer GC cycles. So again, it's a bit faster. And basically, that's the thing why it got so popular you know, at the beginning, I would say. Uh, and 
An obvious question is, OK, so it's faster, I guess, more probably. Uh, can I use it? And the uh, easy answer is yes, uh, but you only have to use those flags for your JVM because uh, JDK 9 and up come with Graal by default. Uh, I mean, like it comes with Graal. It's default for ahead of time compilation. But uh, for JIT, you need to actually enable it with the flags, which is not hard. Or there's a second option. You can just download the Graal VM and use it as it is. It's pre-configured. And now we come to the point where I'm starting to use the term from the actual title, which is Graal VM. And it's not the same thing as Graal, but then many people confusing those two. So just to clarify, um, Graal is the JIT compiler. The, basically the compiler and Graal VM is just a bundle like JVM pre-configured with, pre with Graal, Truffle, which I'm gonna talk about later, and a couple language implementations. So basically Graal VM is the pre-configured fun toy for everyone to use. And also it uses uh, JDK9, uh, JDK8, uh, because it's the last uh, stable long-term support version. So they wanted to have something for the enterprise. Yeah, so Graal is exactly the replacement for existing C2 compiler. Not a big deal, uh, you know. Well, maybe it is for certain scenarios, but for me as a developer, like, I don't really care. Uh, but Graal itself, like, uh, the rewrite itself is not fun and it's not something that made me interested in it. And actually, there's another thing that it introduced. Uh, so I'm going to move things around here because I want to show where it's placed. So the native code is going to be marked with this native flag. And I'm going to put this chocolate cake on the bytecode. And now the magic happens here. Uh, in between of bytecode and the native code, what Graal does is compile it, if, well, parse it and turn it into so-called abstract syntax trees. This is not new. Pretty much all modern compilers do that, but the difference is that it exposes it as an API. And basically what it is, is an in-memory data structure which, you know, just represents your code in very low level, like uh, each node is very basic operation, kind of like an assembly, like add, multiply, call, add to stack, that kind of thing. But the thing that, since it's exposed as an API, Graal doesn't really care where it comes from. What that means is that you can compile whatever into these syntax trees, and you've, you can run anything on JVM. So, the fun part about Graal is that it's actually language agnostic. And this is the most important uh, thing to understand for tonight, because that's the main part we are going to talk about. And the thing that I already mentioned, Truffle, is actually a framework provided by guys from Oracle Labs uh, so that you can easily implement, or at least relatively easy, uh, implement a, a new language which can be used on Graal. Uh, what it comes with is basically all the regular node types of, you know, add, subtract, call a function, create a new object, that kind of thing, uh, because pretty much all modern languages do that anyway, so you need that. So you just you have to write a parser. But there is another very good thing in Truffle, which is it comes with a bunch of optimizations. For example, I guess not many people know, but shitty languages use stack for calling a function. It basically puts parameters in, and it invokes the function, then it takes the parameters out, that kind of thing, and the same for result. But actually, if you want to get really performant language, what you have to do is to play around with registers, and Graal does it for you. It's very hard, actually, to do it properly, but Truffle comes with it out of the box. So for language developers, it's a huge deal. Uh, you know, it just makes life a lot easier. The whole architecture kind of looks like this, which is Java Hotspot, 
unchanged. It's uh, written in C. It's still there. You have the compiler interface. You have the Graal compiler on top, which is written in Java now. Of course, you have a kind of shortcut for Java and other JVM languages, which means that Graal understands bytecode. But you also have the truffle, which actually enables other languages. And for example, it's already implemented by guys from Oracle Labs, uh, the Ruby, R, JavaScript. And also what they did is implement uh, Sulong, which basically means that you can execute native applications in JVM, which is also one of the cool things that you can use Graal for. And I've seen in the past, I, I know like I, my past is not that long, but uh, <laughs> I, I already have seen quite a few solutions for polyglot applications. And to be honest, they all suck. And that, so my first question was, okay, so it can do multiple languages, but I guess it's still not usable, right? And I'm not gonna answer it because it's the topic for Milda, but so. Wait for that. Uh, but what I want to talk about next is actually what cool can you do with Graal? Uh, or what do people do with it? So this is one of the guys from uh, the Graal team. They go around, make a lot of presentations. This one, for example, is about uh, like he's running application on Graal. And if you notice, he's sitting in Chrome. Uh, and you can see that in Chrome, you have a stack trace, which is Ruby files. And actually, he's going through Ruby applications step by step. Basically, when you use Graal to run whatever language uh, applications, what you get pretty much out of the box is all the tooling that you have for Java, all the debuggers, all the uh, uh, I don't know, performance analyzers, you know. You have all that already working for whatever language you run because Graal doesn't really care what it's running since it doesn't even know where the source code comes from. So in JVM, it's all, everything is basically, you know, in the same structure anyway. So it just works, it's cool. It's, I guess for Java developers, Seeing a Chrome debugging, even Java application is not really a big deal because we don't use Chrome. We use it for email or something like that. Okay, uh, another example is uh, the guy goes into a NPM module repository. It's a validator, it checks for valid emails, right? Just regular node stuff. But the fun stuff is that he actually starts running Oracle SQL Server. And if you can't see, I can zoom it in. He's actually running and using that uh, NPM module inside SQL Server. And at that point, I was basically blown away. Like, you can take existing application, you can put code into it. Oracle SQL is like, uh, you know, native one. And yeah, like, you can mix and match a lot of things. I don't know why you would uh, put your logic into database, but for me as a developer, it's still really cool that you uh, can do it. I guess in some niche, you can make use of it. Uh, so yeah, uh, those are the two examples that, uh, you know, somewhat easy to understand, it's fun to see, but there are some more usages. Uh, that you can think of or you know you can apply Graal to. And one of the more realistic ones is that uh, you can use it for legacy applications. Like, you know, I guess most people have heard about some old project written in who knows what kind of language and nobody wants to work with it. You can use Graal to use it as a core, write your new logic in new language, uh, actually maintainable one and just run it on Graal. So that's, I think, useful. Also, I've seen a couple, at least, projects which uh, picked language just because there was this one library in, for example, Node that uh, does the job really well. And there's no counterpart in, for example, Java. So people pick Node. They hate Node, but you know they still do it. 
With Growl, you don't have to make such trade-off. You just have to, you can use pretty much any modern language uh, library in Growl, which is, uh, again, useful. Uh, I guess it doesn't have many use cases because usually you have a lot of libraries in Java, for example. But uh, one of the, especially talking about Truffle, you also have this kind of nice thing about uh, language development, which is it just makes things easier for language developers. I personally hope that uh, we're gonna see kind of the same situation with language development, what we see with open source, which is people fork stuff, they introduce new ideas, it's relatively easy for them, and they can say, okay, just use my compiler and you can, I don't know, have really cool JavaScript in your application. And I guess I wish that uh, it would kind of power the whole development for languages. I feel like it's a bit stuck right now. So that's, I guess, my personal wish. Also, uh, something that might happen is actually people might start uh, writing custom optimizations. Like I said, Graal is very good with streams and optimizing them, but you can do a lot of very specific optimizations for very specific applications. Maybe we'll see in the future something like uh, open source optimizations that you can just take and plug into your JVM to make your application run like 10 times faster, hopefully. Uh, and there's another more business related usage for Graal, which is it can actually be used in cloud, uh, by cloud providers quite well. Uh, I'll start with the, I don't know, like a less useful one, which is, for example, if you go to App Engine and you see a bunch of implementations for Node, for Golang, for Python, for Java, even for Java, uh, I believe Java 8 was uh, not available for quite long because they were spending lots of time developing the new runtime. With Graal, you can use a lot of same runtime for all the languages. So I guess it can, it can be used by providers to kind of get a faster development cycle, I guess. But another thing which is actually being developed by Oracle and what they intend to use Graal for is uh, use it for, I think it's very useful for something like uh, Cloud Functions or you know, very platform for your uh, application. And actually they introduce something like uh, isolation in memory. They argue that uh, Docker, for example, is very heavy. And if you just run everything on Graal, you don't have to ship JVM, for example. You can share libraries between applications and that kind of thing. So this is one of the things that Oracle is actually working on, which is using or developing Graal for that purpose, running JVM as the single kind of container manager for the server. So that's also kind of interesting, at least I find it interesting, yeah. And uh, I already talked that it's uh, easy to start using Graal. Uh, especially for Node, I want to just show how easy it is to use the bundle, the Graal VM, not the flags. So basically, you just go to their repository or website. You go to releases, you download the tar, and you have a bunch of binaries. And that's basically it. You just have to use them. Uh, for example, for Node, you put it into class path, and you get this special node with uh, custom flags. You just add like polyglot, and you already have Java working. Uh, are working, uh, you put JVM, it's on JVM, you don't put it, you know. It's very easy to use, like you, even to mess around, you just have to download it, like it takes a couple of minutes and you're good to go. You can run your existing Express applications on it, for example. So yeah, thank you. Maybe you have some questions. <laughs> <laughs>